Hello, we're going to do another video on lifestyle versus medicine. I just had another viewer, uh, this time Ken Rosh, or Rock, or um, Rack. I'm not sure, Ken, I'm just going to call you Ken. Um, tell me to look at uh, a, a uh, plant-based doc video. I'm going to do it. And we're going to go a little bit more into detail on why there's so much um, debate, animosity, uh, emotion, and passion around this issue. But first, um, an introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, um, <clears throat> uh, Dr. Brewer, PrevMed, heart attack, stroke, dementia, cancer prevention, disability prevention. Um, have been in prevention for 30 years. I used to run the preventive medicine, uh, trained in preventive medicine at Johns Hopkins, ran the program there. So, and have uh, run companies like uh, medical, with medical, I've run medical staff, been the chief medical officer for large companies like Premise with uh, 500 clinics and you know, hundreds of docs. Again, I know primary care, I know prevention. And there's a major debate out there that continues to um, to boil. There's a resolution, but we'll get to that next. First, let's look at Mr. Rock uh, Ken's comments. He says, uh, <clears throat> "Oh, he sent me a comment. He said, have you seen Doctor? Do you Doctor follow Doctor?" John McDougall. I've seen Dr. John McDougall. Actually, I'm going to show you. He uh, put in a link to one of his videos. That one. And I put in it, put it in a little bit um, higher so you can read it and find it if you wish. Dr. John McDougall. This is in a lecture to the College of Lifestyle Medicine. Again, um, there's a lot of my friends, Michael uh, Parkinson, Miriam Alexander, um, who helped found the College of Lifestyle Medicine. Um, uh, again, I understand it. So why do I keep talking about things like metformin? Let's, we'll get there in just a minute. So uh, a couple of things about this uh, lecture that Dr. McDougall um, put in at, at 241, he said, sulfonylureas double the risk of death. He's right, by the way. And I've never written a script for a sulfonylurea and never will. They, um, they decrease blood sugar. They, uh, and they can cause hypoglycemia. That's what their problem is. And guess what? There's debate. There's, uh, probably, um, a lot of people involved with the standards for this, uh, for endocrinology actually have debated and tried to take sulfonyl, uh, sulfonyl ureas out. They haven't, or they've been back and forth. Uh, there's a move to put them back in, especially in some countries where they're just easy to get. But again, I don't use them. Uh, why give medications at all? This is it at uh, four and five. Well, there are patients that need them. Um, unfortunately, Dr. McDougall does make an assumption that metformin, uh, DPP-4s, the uh, GLP-1s, all other medications do the same thing that sulfonylureas do. Uh, just don't give them. I'll acknowledge any medication has a side effect. But again, we'll talk about why some people need medication. Uh, at five minutes, he talks about drug money, again, associated with... Um, if he's talking about metformin and sulfonylureas, they're dirt cheap, and there's not a lot of drug money around those anymore. In fact, the um, National Institutes of Aging is trying to develop a a clinical trial called TAME, Targeting Aging with Metformin, but they can't get anybody to fund it because, guess what, uh, call up your local pharmacy and see how much metformin is. A lot of pharmacies, 
like Walmart Pharmacy are giving it out for free now, zero copay. So <clears throat> no drug money around metformin now. There, are, there is drug money associated with that, some diabetic meds, big drug money. I'm not arguing with that, but again, not with metformin. Um, <clears throat> at minute 530 says lifestyle's the cure, um, diet, not drugs. And at minute six, he goes on to say, lose weight, uh, drop the fat in your diet and your diabetes goes away. Um, I dropped, I went for 30 years with a plant-based diet. I, uh, Kept a BMI of about 21, low fat uh, diet, <clears throat> plenty of exercise. Um, I didn't do as many high intensity intervals and resistance training, but some. I played a lot of basketball, ran marathons uh, fairly regularly, uh, half marathons regularly, and even an ultra marathon. You you could probably say I walked the ultra, ultra marathon mostly, but anyway, bottom line is great exercise patterns, and I still develop insulin resistance. I've got plenty of patients like that. So here's the thing. You have patients that do all of this stuff and they still get insulin resistant. Why is that? We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But first of all, let's talk about what does the American College of uh, Endocrinology say? What, this is their standard. Uh, and here are a few things that they recommended. This is a standard as of this year. Um, lifestyle optimization is essential. That's the first thing they come out of the block saying. So I get it. Even the standards guys get it. Lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle. But lifestyle alone doesn't work for all patients. Weight loss, if you're overweight and you have type 2 diabetes, again, uh, lifestyle again. A1C target of 6.5. That's where I wouldn't agree with them. I think that's way too high. I think we're, uh, we see plenty of problems correlating with lower numbers. Our, my target, our target at PrevMed is five and below. Now, a lot of people don't reach that as we got, get into our 60s. Again, genetic and aging issues. Um, Self-monitoring blood glucose, agree, I agree with that. Um, and again, if you have a problem, how can you deal with it if you're not measuring uh, the indicators? They also say, look, meds need to be individualized. You want to minimize risk of hypoglycemia you know, as a priority. And if you get back to Dr. McDougall's lecture that Ken referred to, again, a little bit of overgeneralization there, saying that all meds are bad. Uh, no, sulfonylureas are bad, and sulfonylureas are bad because they have a significant risk of hypoglycemia, higher, much higher risk than um, metformin or uh, pioglitazone for the orals. And then once you get into the injectables, different issue. Um, they have several other recommendations. They go on to say, look, metformin is a low risk. Uh, it's a baseline for combination therapy. Most people, once they get up into the six and a halfs and sevens and eights, are going to need combination therapy. And I agree with that, too. I'm just getting to them earlier, and we're intervening quicker. Blood pressure and lipids need to be dealt with. I agree with that. That's what we do. So, <clears throat> a, a, a summary on this debate. Lifestyle is key. I get it. Uh, I've been preaching that gospel for 30-something years, and I've lived it. Again, I've never had a, I don't think I've ever had a BMI of over 24. Um, guess what? We complain about the standards people being too slow, too conservative. I would still say the American College of Endocrinology is a little bit slow and conservative. Um, the hemoglobin A1C is the one that, that uh, I say is too slow, too conservative. But even these slow conservative guys get it. Lifestyle is item number one. It's item number two. It's item number three. They didn't recommend sulfonylureas. They don't mention it in their uh, medication recommendations. Uh, I don't use sulfonylureas, just like I said before. 
they create hypoglycemia risk, which is where that uh, warning came from that Dr. Uh, McDougall quoted. Um, so again, let's get back to it. What about the patient? BMI of 21, plant-based diet uh, for decades, good exercise, and still insulin resistant. What do you do then? You tell them, go plant-based, get your BMI down to the low 20s, exercise, Okay, <clears throat> see, uh, there are plenty of them. They increase with age. Um, by age 60, 50% of folks have significant insulin resistance. And by age 65, it's significantly over 75%. You'll actually see a little bit lower numbers. You go to the CDC, you'll see, uh, again, amazing numbers, but a little bit lower than these. Uh, part of the reason is that CDC is using... Um, surveys of um, hemoglobin A1C of uh, six and a half or seven or above. Now, <clears throat> if you look at my patients, yes, lifestyle first, lifestyle second, lifestyle third. Um, look at my patient videos. You'll see also, same thing. Uh, I've got tons of patients that have lost 20, 30, 40 pounds. If you look at the, um, the clinical trials, lifestyle is about three times more effective. But with the clinical trials, they're talking about actually decreasing your BMI, 10% kind of uh, number or more. Um, some people can accomplish that. Some people accomplish it, but they still have insulin resistance. So sometimes lifestyle is not enough. So why are we having all of this passionate debate? Am I saying, am I saying, doctor, uh, where, where's the disconnect here? Am I saying plant-based docs like Dr. Joel Kahn, who's a great preventive cardiologist, um, Dr. McDougall, Dr. Greger, Dr. Bernard, all of these docs are wrong? No, I'm not saying that. Here's the issue. <clears throat> They're covering the vast majority of the U.S. population and what's growing to be the world population and obese, um, uh, first world diet, uh, low exercise type of group. When that's the problem, lifestyle is the solution. But there are a lot of people and it's growing every day, dramatically, that this is not enough. They've already done these items. They've, again, like I said, uh, low BMI, uh, plant-based diet. Now what do you do? You have to understand, this is a, this is a big world. Um, there are more than one causes for insulin resistance and diabetes, type 2 diabetes. One of them is age. One of them is genetics. Yes, weight's important. Yes, uh, macronutrients in your diet are important and we're finding out more and more but there's still debate there. Please, let's just, um, I, I realize there's a, a, a time and a place to be passionate. Let's not throw each under the, other under the bus. This is a little bit more complicated issue than most of us tend to realize. Thank you for your attention.